This is Mark J. Boone, Assistant Professor in the Department of Religion and Philosophy at Hong Kong Baptist University. This is a video abstract for my article, Inferential, Coherential, and Foundational Warrant, an Eclectic Account of the Sources of Warrant, published in the journal Logos and Episteme in the year 2014. Epistemology is the branch of philosophy that studies knowledge, and my article concerns the structure of knowledge. So the first thing to explain is that there is such a thing. Knowledge has a structure. Our warranted or our justified beliefs are organized. They exist in a network or in a system. They are arranged in a certain way. And there are reasons for our beliefs, and these reasons typically have their own reasons, which are themselves other beliefs, which typically have their own reasons and other beliefs, and so on. But we should not presume that this goes on forever. Whether it does and what it might do instead is the topic of a big debate over the structure of knowledge and epistemology. So, in my article, I suggest that, the, that this debate has been quite successful. We now have the answers to these questions, or at least we are very, very close. The structure of knowledge is the entire arrangement of all these justified or warranted beliefs, and epistemologists have spent 60 or 70 years describing the structure of knowledge and debating how exactly it should best be characterized. In my article, I bring things almost to a conclusion. I describe three ways a belief, which is warranted or justified, might be linked to that structure of knowledge, how it might be a part of that network. These three ways are also three ways a belief can be warranted or justified. First, a belief has inferential warrant if it is justified by good evidence from other beliefs. Second, it has what I'm calling coherential warrant if it is consistent with a large system of warranted beliefs. And then thirdly, it has what I call foundational warrant, if it has some warrant independently of other beliefs, if it has something going for it, which makes it a reasonable or a rational or a justified or a warranted belief independently of its relation to other beliefs. I explain in my article why all three of these types of warrant are necessary, and why inferential and coherential warrant are still relevant for beliefs which have foundational warrant. And I explain what this means for the different accounts of the structure of knowledge, and what it means is this. One theory, called pure coherentism, is mistaken because it neglects foundational warrant. Or uh, maybe I should say the pure version of one theory called coherentism is mistaken since it neglects foundational warrant. Strong foundationalism, another theory, is also mistaken because it neglects the relevance for beliefs with foundational warrant of inferential and coherential warrant. There are only two viable theories on the structure of knowledge, a weak foundationalism and a foundherentism. We are talking about the near completion of a grand project in philosophy. This actually answers nearly all of the questions epistemologists have been asking about the structure of knowledge. The only question it does not answer is this question, which makes the difference between foundherentism and weak foundationalism. Do some beliefs have enough foundational warrant to be known without the help of inferential or coherential warrant? Do they have enough foundational warrant to be knowledge, assuming they're true and they're not Gettier cases? without additional help from inferential coherential warrant. I think some of them do, and that makes me what I call a weak foundationalist. By the way, a lot of this depends, at least a lot of the terms depend, uh, a lot of the um, these claims I'm making in these terms uh, depends on how we define terms. The ideas matter more than the terms, of course, uh, but if you use a different definition of the terms, then um, uh, we might think we're dealing with different ideas uh, that we may not. Um, if you define foundationalism differently or define strong versus weak foundationalism differently, uh, we might have to uh, state the conclusions differently, though I think we would be stating much the same conclusions. I do spend some time in my article narrowing down the available definitions. Foundationalism in particular has at least uh, three significant definitions that have been given for it. Now, I recommend this article for anyone looking for an introduction to epistemology or for anyone interested in the, the topic of the structure of knowledge. And I also recommend it for anyone interested in some of the epistemologists I deal with the most. These include Alvin Plantinga, Lawrence Bonjour, Susan Hack, and Roderick Chisholm. The article is available on the website of the journal Logos and Episteme, and there is a link on my academia.edu profile. That's uh, Mark J. Boone, PhD, at academia.edu. Thanks for watching.